All right, welcome to this video for five tips for showing up to class. Uh, this is particularly for virtual students who are trying to figure out exactly how they can be present, what they might need to do, just some tips and tactics that can kind of make it easier for you to be in class, especially if you have other, if you have other things going on or if you're having trouble, you know, really figuring out how to set up a space uh, to be in class. So the first is actually finding a space. And when we talk about this, we don't necessarily mean, you know, finding an office on, or anything like that, but trying to look around in where you are going to be participating from and thinking about, is there a space where there is limited distractions or limited things going on that you, you can just sit in and be there? And, you know, sometimes it's as simple as finding a corner or someplace that's facing a wall or having a wall behind you, uh, somewhere that you can be. Um, and it doesn't have to be elaborate. It can be as simple as just a corner. It can be simple as, you know, here is a chair and a table and this is where I'm going to sit from and be engaged in the class. There's also, and, and students have mentioned this before, that sometimes seeing themselves for hours on end in these classes can be tiring or distracting. So if you want to remove yourself, still be on video for others to see, but not necessarily have to be constantly looking at yourself. I know I certainly don't want to be looking at myself. I mean, look at me. Who wants to look at that for hours? I don't. So one way to address that is to turn off the video to yourself, but keep it on for others. And it's actually really simple to do. So when you're in the Zoom environment, if you move your cursor up to the right corner of your video, you see those three little dots. When you click on them, it gives you the, this drop-down menu, and one of those options includes Hide Self View. When you click on that, you disappear, you can see everybody else, but you don't necessarily have to have yourself projected back at you. It's very easy to undo as well. Again, you move your cursor to the upper right-hand corner of whatever video feeds are in the Zoom, you click on those three dots, you click show yourself and you're back. So the next is actually blurring or using virtual backgrounds. Sometimes we don't necessarily want the background to be seen when we're in these rooms. And that's totally makes sense. That's really, you know, for, for a lot of us, for our privacy, for the fact that there might be people around us, we want to maintain that, that barrier. So you can actually turn on blurring or virtual back backgrounds on both your, uh, desktop device and a tablet or, vir or smartphone. Again, pretty easy to do. Once you're in the Zoom environment, you come down to where your video is and you click that little, you know, that little arrow uh, and you see these options pop up. You want to choose, choose virtual background. Select choose virtual background. You'll get this in, and to be clear, this is for your desktop. We'll do the uh, phone and tablet in a moment. Once you get to this setting, you have your choices. You can blur or you can add, you choose one of these images. So if you click on blur, all of a sudden, it's really hard to see what's behind you and, and what isn't uh, in focus. It is just focused on you and nothing else. If you see in this video, I can't even see my hand uh, using the blur feature. Again, you can turn it off. Um, but if you want to add images, they provide some images, and then you can also add an image. So if you click on that little plus sign on the screen, it will give you a place to add images. And so I've added this image as my background. Again, it's all pretty easy that kind of once you're done at this point, you click the little X in the upper right corner of this settings uh, menu. And there you are. You have your virtual background and therefore anything that's going on behind you won't necessarily be picked up by the camera. Uh, and it gives you a little bit of privacy within the space that you're in. Again, you can do this on your phone. So if you're on your phone, what you'll look for is first, if you want to turn on your video, um, it is the button right down there that says start video. Uh, and then if you want more features such as the background filters, you want to click those three dots. Once you click those three dots, again, you'll have several different options. You choose background and filters. Once you're in backgrounds and filters, again, you can click the blur button and that will blur your background. So again, if, if there's things going on around you and you don't want that to be seen, very easy to do. You can also add images. Um, but before you do that, you can see this is what it looks like if you are in the blur in the blurred background environment on your phone. But again, we're back to this menu and we're going back to filters. And this time we're gonna add an image. Now for this, you can only add images that are on your phone. So if there's a background you wanna choose, you do want to actually 
download that onto your phone so it's easy to have as a background because it will first default and ask you you know do you want to allow zoom to have access to your photos generally in this case you do need to say yes if you want to access those and then it's going to give you your your photo scroll uh, so in this case these are yes photos on my phone um, and i will choose which one and then once i press my finger on it and hit OK, it will pop up as my virtual background. So again, pretty easy, pretty simple to uh, put those up as background to give you a little more privacy about where you might be. But the next two are ways to actually be more active or to really think about, you know, what it means to show up. So we talked a little bit about, you know, how to visually be present and to, you know, how you might create space or, or uh, create some privacy within doing that. These next two are more about what do you do when you're there in the virtual class. And the first one I would just strongly emphasize is, you know, to chat it up, to really make sure that you know, your presence is known. Now you can do that obviously by talking a lot and by unmuting yourself and contributing the conversation, but sometimes your situation may not allow for that. There may be noise going on. There may be things that you don't want people to hear. And that's totally acceptable and understandable. So this means then you might want to be doing a bit more use of the chat and adding your questions, adding your thoughts, adding upon what others are saying to to let students know that you're present, you're there, and you want to engage with them. You want to be there as part of the class and sharing and learning and contributing to one another's learning. So that's something to, to think about how you would do that or, or the ways you can do that when you are attending class virtually. And then the final tip is really thinking about this question of being accountable to your community. Right, So your peers, they need you and they want you. So much of what we do in our classes and our cohorts and the like is not just one directional learning. Everybody learns from everybody else in our courses. And so they need you, they want you, they want to hear from you and have you help them in their learning, just as they want to help and will help you in your own learning, in your own development. And that really only happens if you're there to give contributions, to hear, to listen, to engage. Uh, it's important to really think about, you know, are we respecting everybody's commitment to show up? And one of the really interesting ways that virtual students can think about this is after if they are attending a class virtual and they have their camera off and they're not necessarily participating or adding to the chat or unmuting themselves you know a good question to ask is you know what are you taking from the class and what are you giving to the class and if at the end of that class, if you've been doing other things besides just attending class, you've been, you know, doing cooking or grocery shopping, which are important things, you know, very valuable things. But if at the end of that, you can't really recall, you can't really uh, think about what you learned or how you advanced your project, that does raise a question about are you attending class in the ways that are important for your learning, for your cohort, for what you're setting up to do here uh, in, our, in our college? So really think about that and think about how you can demonstrate that and hold on to that attention and give that to your, your cohort, give that to your peers and receive that from your peers. You know, everybody is showing up and, and we know Many of us have a lot of challenges just to show up, but if we're going to show up, let's make sure we give one another the time and the attention to learn from one another. So that's all for now. I hope these tips are helpful. If you have other tips on how you as a virtual student or, uh, or how you even as a, a physical student can get more out of what's going on in these classrooms, especially as we're balancing them between uh, virtual and face-to-face, -face, I would love to hear them. I, I really want to gather these and reshare these back with the community. So thank you all so much, and I look forward to hearing from you.